What? <laughs> what is going on? You got to subscribe just for that. Just for that intro. Everybody watching right now. And us doing that. <laughs> you can subscribe right now. Follow that samurai guy. What is going on? It's your boy Preston. That's right. Hanging out in the movie dojo with my brother from another mother. That's right. Filmmaker, martial artist, actor. He's done it all. Writer, Kyle Long, baby. Welcome back. What's up, everybody? Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Yeah. We got people watching right now. There it is. The Finkinator. Yeah. He says, let me be frank. <laughs> I love how he's holding the wrench. You see the wrench little icon there. I love that. I love that. You got Shin Batman. Talk is the goat. He's the Billy Goat's gruff. That's right. We're going to get into it. But yeah, man, welcome back. Uh, we had a blast. You. Uh, you know, we always have a blast talking movies, me and mm -hmm. Kyle. Uh, talk, uh, reviewing Silent Night, John Woo's Silent Night, which was epic. If you guys mm -hmm. missed that, make sure you check it out. And, uh, you know, all kinds of plethora of reviews here. Uh, but yeah, this one, man, when this uh, teaser trailer dropped, I think last year. Yeah. Um, and it was called One Percenter. Mm -hmm. It was called One Percenter, not One Percent Warrior. See, Well Go USA is smart. <laughs> Shout out to Well Go, well Go USA. Where's your copy? Where's your copy, son? Where, where's your, where's your Blu-ray? You got it with you? There we go. There we go. Oh, let me flip it around. There we go. See, we'll go USA. Shout out to the almighty. We'll go USA. There you go. We have our copies right here. They, they, they know us Americans over here. We're going to be like, 1% or what? Yeah. <laughs> with some, some political shit. This is some political crap. <laughs> no, I was like, no, we're going we gonna to retitle it 1% Warriors. See, we'll go USA is smart. Yeah, uh, but yeah, if you guys are interested, uh, this has been uh, it's been out for a while now. It's available mm -hmm. on Blu ray and digital, and you can watch it on the Hayat channel. Uh, yeah, make sure you guys check it out. Uh, but uh, yeah, we are back again talking some talk, and uh, yes, good name change. <laughs> <laughs> Shane's got to get it, he's got to get it. Yeah, get oh it. my goodness. Oh. <laughs> The flashlight fight was so silly. Oh, where that's it. We are bad. Um, where's, where's the ban button here? On <laughs> Fink. There we go. I'm click on it, and he's gone. That's it. He's never going to show up again. He's been banned. Delete. 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 <laughs> 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 no, we love you, brother. We're just having fun here. We're just having, we'll we'll get to that fight a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, it, this is such an interesting and fascinating movie. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be for everyone. No, uh, I highly recommend it. If you're I, an action fan, if you're a martial arts movie fan, if you're a Takasaka Gucci fan, this is a no brainer. Uh, but um, uh, I, I highly recommend this movie big time because, especially if you're into filmmaking and if you're really into fight choreography and all the different styles, and if you're really into stunt work and all the different types of groups that are out there and exist. And the different debates on which one is better and who does it better. If you're really into that, then this movie is like literally made for you because it's fascinating because you don't really have to pick a side. And the movie itself doesn't necessarily pick a side no. either. When the movie ends, uh, the, this is a spoiler review. This, uh, mm -hmm. You know, everybody watching right now, this will be spoilers. Uh, it doesn't really say when the movie's over, this is the perfect style. This is the perfect type of fight choreography for films. That's it. The end. Mm -hmm. No, it still uh, leaves it up to the viewer to decide. Mm -hmm. Even even Tuck's uh, character, uh, you know, he has his opinion, and we're going to get to that a little bit here. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Hey, Shin, what's going on? Uh, Good to see you, brother. Uh, but, yeah, when this teaser one percenter was dropped last year, I was like, ooh, it's a little movie within a movie. You know, I love those mm -hmm. if they're done right. You know, uh, uh, yeah, almost JCVD style, where yeah. he's playing himself in a way. Uh, he's an action star, yeah. and then real shit pops off, and then he uses his badassity uh, to kick ass. Uh, but it's very interesting uh, because mm. I bring this up. Uh, believe it or not, this movie, uh, something similar type of conversation related to, not related to this movie, but kind of is. Check out uh, recently. Uh, my appearance on uh, the Wing Chun Master himself, Alex Richter, the Kung Fu Genius. Make sure you go to his channel. That's right, the Kung Fu Genius Podcast. We had a blast. It was a huge honor to be on there and talk uh, Wing Chun martial arts movies. And uh, uh, man, 
mostly the Yip Man sequels and franchise and a lot more Bruce Lee and all that stuff. But I bring up there something important. And I bring up when I had Marco Zoror as a guest and we were reacting and watching a different type of fight scenes and the different styles throughout the years. And I use this as an example really quick. We're going to get to the movie, but I just this is a perfect segue to 1% Warrior. I, I, I mentioned to Alex that I showed him my favorite, possibly my favorite old school kung fu movie of all time, A Diagram Pole Fighter. And I mentioned that I, I showed the fight, me and Marco were watching the staff fight with Gordon Liu. I believe it was uh, Kofi. I, I might be wrong. But that, that yeah. fight was so good. <laughs> The staff fight, the athleticism, the timing, the way it was filmed, the music. I, I just, it's its one of my favorite fights in that movie. Uh, and it had a message. There was a point to it, right? It was Gordon Liu's character's growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as a, as a you know, as a, as a martial artist and stuff. And Marco Zawar, he was really impressed by it. He was like, man, these, the athleticism, the timing, these guys are so, such professionals at what they do. But to him, to him personally, remember everybody's different. That's why this mm -hmm. movie, One Percent Warrior, should be seen. It should be celebrated. Yes, because everyone's different. Mm -hmm. Marco Zawar said him him personally. He loves what these guys do. They're legends. His movie uh, Fist of, of the Condor was an homage to kung fu films uh, with his own style on it. But to him, it looked like a great, amazing demonstration. It looked like both guys were cooperating to, to, with each other. Not, he didn't say they both looked like they were dancing. He didn't say that. But he said it looked like a performance. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. They're amazing at what they do. He wasn't bashing it, but he prefers something a little bit different. And then right after that, we watched the fight scene to, from Fist of Fury, a.k.a. Chinese Connection. Mm -hmm. And he's a huge Bruce Lee fan. He prefers Bruce Lee over a lot of the old school Kung Fu films, mm -hmm. even though he has a lot of respect for them. And in the Bruce Lee fight, he was like a kid in a candy store. He was giddy. And it was the end fight between the suspenders guy yeah. and, then, uh, and, um, and Bruce Lee at the very end of the movie. And he was talking about, look at all of the broken rhythm. He's like, yes, there is fight choreography, but there's moments throughout that fight where the rhythm is broken. And you'll see Bruce Lee faint and do a low kick and then a high kick. And then it's not just one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Yes. Right? It's not that. It's broken rhythm. High, low. Right? Cross, hook. Right? Jab. Jab, low kick. And low kick high. Right. Bruce Lee does a feint before he does a back fist. In, you know, when the guy goes, so you want to see how good you are? Hmm? Then you must be tired of living. And then Bruce, it's so fast. I always thought Bruce Lee did like, a, like did like this, like a quick back fist. But if you slow it down, he he faints first to fake the guy out and then punches him. But Bruce Lee's so fast. You didn't even see it, right? So he got all excited about that, right? So everyone's different, right? Rick Myers... Yeah. You know, shout out to my brother from another mother. He would probably prefer the fight scene of a diagram pole fighter over the Bruce Lee one. So that's why one percent warriors should be celebrated because questions are asked, yes. shots are fired, right? And yes. we're gonna get to the shots being fired. Oh yeah, a little bit. But me, me, I love the old school kung fu films. Mm -hmm. Love them. I don't give a shit about the one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't care because these guys are so good at what they do. And you can tell it's ridiculously hard to do even that shit. Yeah. So we have a pre appreciation for the old school, but I understand the more realistic fight stuff, right? Yes. But we're going to get to the, uh, the Kensuke Sotomora type of style. Yes. We'll get to that in a little bit later here. But, uh, but yeah, make sure you guys check this out. Uh, I have it uh, on the community page of the YouTube channel. Just click on it and uh, you can see all of the hilariosity. And of course, I have to tell my Donnie Yen story, but you'll hear about it when you watch it. So fucking Wing Chun, see, guys. That was the <laughs> fucking Wing Chun, guys. That was the best Suzuki Dojo student invitation. Yeah. <laughs> I've only seen the movie five billion times. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? I only say this. I only I only say this once. We are not sick men. And he walks out, got the Bruce Lee tip, walking out like that. Uh, there you go. Shin says he's been a fan of talk since high school. Look at that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got all the way from the UK. What's going on, man? Right. 
Uh, he just finished. Nice. He just finished mm -hmm. it. Yes. All right. So again, I don't think this movie is going to be for everyone. I think people mm -hmm. probably are going to be disappointed with the ending. They're probably going to be like, oh, it's what? Like I see people doing that, right? Mm -hmm. That want a straightforward narrative. No questions asked. We have the beginning and then we have the middle and then we have the end and that's what the end is and that's it. No questions. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing to make us think. We don't want any of that. We just want to see Tuck kick ass, right? Yeah. They might be a little disappointed with this type of movie. But again, mm -hmm. filmmaker, you know, you know, appreciation for filmmaking. <laughs> actual, exactly. film, actual filmmaker over here. <laughs> appreciation for stunts and the different styles of fireography. Because the mm -hmm. more, the more the better. The yes. more the better. You can have the 87 elevens. You can have the Jude Poyers from Mayhem. You, you can, can have, have Yen Wu Ping. You can you have can Yen Wu Ping, Lock All Young. Yeah. All it's it's you know, Sonny Chiba, all that stuff. I mean, this is what it's all about. Right, Ex expression yourself, right, getting your mm -hmm. style out there, and it's exciting. And everybody has their, you know, preferred version. I'm sure you can, you can have, uh, you can have, uh, you know, I'm sure they're gonna have their naysayers, right? But hey, yeah. everyone prefers different styles, right? Here we go. Uh, oh, look at that, he Shane's world, mm -hmm. like the ending. Wow, look at that. And we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna let Kyle yeah. explain that in detail. But let's get into this, baby. Yes. One percent warrior. Kyle, plot synopsis, sir, for everybody watching. Let's see. Let me get the plot synopsis up from good old trusty IMDb. While you're reading that, I'm, I'm going to do some wave action here. Yeah. So two ruthless Yakuza gangs interrupt a shooting of an action flick at an abandoned factory on an island. The action star isn't too pleased. 100 Yakuza against one. Pfft, too easy. Thank you, IMDb. <laughs> Thank you. That's about right for for an IMDb plus about this. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I went from talk. I went from talk's wave style to yeah. Bruce Lee from Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what always made me laugh? Th that shot of Bruce Lee was so badass and iconic when he's doing this. Yeah, to kind of confuse the the guy, right? And you have yeah. the cool effect. What always made me laugh was after that, Bruce Lee's face expression was fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> that was perfect. Dude. He's doing this. He looks all badass and epic. And then right after that, he's like. I just squeezed one out. <laughs> Oh yeah, but uh, uh, great old IMDb plot synopsis coming coming in there. Did you want to add a little bit to that, or we can just? Uh, I'm right trying to find it. something better than that. <laughs> God damn! Is it on the like... back of the Well Go USA? Yeah, actually, uh... let's, go, let's go with this. Yeah. After his devastatingly fast samurai style combat approach sets filmmakers against him, a legendary action star films his own movie on turf claimed by feuding yakuza gangs, including Japan's deadliest martial arts assassin. There you go. Better. Okay, oh, th this is why we have this here <laughs> because <laughs> never trust IMDb. <laughs> the Almighty will go USA. Uh, uh, yeah. So directed by Yudai Yamaguchi. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna click on him. Have you? Are you familiar with a lot of his stuff? I am not, but the fact that both um, oh. Kensuke Sonomura and yeah and Tak have worked together before. And I'm recognizing I'm pulling it up right now. I'm recognizing some stuff. Oh my goodness, he's done so much. He's done a lot of the high and high and low uh stuff. Yes. But uh which I I want to get into the high and low movies, but there's like five billion of them. But I do recognize um oh Meatball Machine. Yes, I, yeah. I've seen that one. That was a bizarre but entertaining movie. Japan. But <laughs> yeah, Japan. I enjoyed it for what it was. But here here's Yakuza weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Yakuza weapon was wild. Talks in that. He's got a Gatling gun for an arm. Dead ball. I've been wanting to see this forever. Have you seen Dead Ball? I have not seen Talks to in be, that too. To be honest, like yeah. the only which everyone's gonna be like, what the fuck, Kyle? The only talk Sakaguchi movie I have watched has yeah. been reborn. Oh, you never even seen Versus. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a sad part, but well, uh, again, I reborn, I respect... yeah, but reborn is like to to really get Tox style and the mm -hmm. type of fire choreography. Reborn is like perfect, so yeah. 
But Dead Ball looks bizarre. I'm gonna. Re- we have to review this or something. This is like horror comedy with baseball, bro. Like it looks insane. I'm looking at the trailer right now. Uh, but yeah, if you, any of you guys watching, if, if you've seen Dead Ball, let me know what you thought about it. The ABCs of Death is a horror anthology. Uh, I've seen that one. Yeah, so One Percenter is the most recent one of him. But we get introduced. We're going to talk about him a little bit later. Mr. Um, uh, Togo. We're going to get. We're going to talk about uh, Ishi Togo a little bit later here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, the guy I was mentioning earlier, the 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 uh, who was also in this, he was in Bad City and he was also in Hydra. Masanori Masanori Miyamoto. Yes. Um, like this dude just is fucking awesome. Baby Assassin's yeah. Hydra and Yakuza Apocalypse as the fucking frog. <laughs> Masanori Miyamoto is like. Wait, 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 wait. He's the frog. Yeah, he's the frog in Yakuza Apocalypse. That's Masanori Miyamoto. That dude. <laughs> right there. I'm just like... <laughs> like oh, that's amazing. I, like, yeah. him just walking in that fucking suit and you yeah. hear that fucking western music, I'm just like, who is this guy? And then you see him fight, I'm like, who is this guy? Who is he? And, then, and yeah. then you see him in high job, like, oh my god, you're the same dude, holy shit. And then, and baby assassins, I'm like, Holy fuck. And then seeing yeah. him in this, I was like, I appreciate you actually acting in this. <laughs> That's all I could say. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How fun. That's really yeah. funny. I, I like I like that even that movie even more now that you yeah. said that he was in the frog suit. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got Emily in the house. Uh, she enjoyed the film. It's one Nathan. All right. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. I should dedicate this entire show <laughs> to bad Bruce Lee movie. <laughs> <laughs> And we got some love for verses here. All right. Bruce Lee uh, leads. Wasn't too impressed by the story, but I love the action. Those who do not. Uh, there you go. There we go. All right. Copy that. Yeah. Before you arrived, Bruce, I said this movie's not for everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, I'm going to reiterate here. If you're fans of stuntmen, stunts, actual filmmaking, and the different perspectives on different styles of fly choreography, you will probably appreciate the movie a lot more than uh, just uh, wanting an an interesting, simple narrative from beginning to end. So, mm-hmm. all right, so let's jump right into it here. Oh my God, the beginning, bro. Yeah, I was already laughing with bootleg Urani Kinshin. <laughs> <laughs> the sh- oh man, we're already taking shots at yeah. Kenji here. It's an obviously if it's an obvious shot at Kenji, but yes. it, it may I mean, you could take shots. Mm-hmm. I I think it's more of a playful shot. I don't think yes. he's like Kenji sucks. Yeah, uh, I, I think he. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what talk really thinks, but I think it, it kind of seemed like it was a playful mm-hmm. type a playful, of shot. <laughs> definitely a playful jab at like yeah at the whole evolution of action, which again. The way he says it to Tony, <laughs> the the stunt coordinator in the film, Tony, like Tony stunts on the Tony team. stunts, like he actually yeah. just says it that yeah, you think it's all dancing. It's like what you see is this. It's real action. What we say is mainstream, and I'm just like that is too real. That's really too real, especially yeah, like with yeah, how yeah. action is done now, right. and when you really see everything. And for someone like talk. And he's just like, no, this is how I feel. And all I can say is watching the first few minutes, I'm like, this is getting too real. And I feel this. <laughs> because <laughs> it, it, it was literally like, I'm sitting there going like, man, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how to feel. Everyone could say, yeah, didn't you like John McCormick? I'm like, yeah, get away. <laughs> get, get, go over there. Go over there. Like everyone says, do you like extraction too? Go over there. <laughs> don't, don't come out. Don't don't come out. Don't turn around until I say. <laughs> and then and then watching baby says I'm like, okay, now I understand. I understand why Rick said Japan has it down pat. Bro, and you said you said after watching Baby Assassins. Right? After watching yeah. Baby Assassins, right. like I totally yeah. understand, and especially Hydra, and then understanding who Kensuke Sonomura yeah. is. I'm like, holy yeah. shit, what is he doing? And then when I yeah. heard about this, I was like, uh-huh. okay, I want to see what he does with talk here. I really right. want to see. After seeing Reborn, I'm just like. I want to see what he does with talk here, yeah. but to start this movie off with such a meta thing about like birth being <laughs> reborn anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, birth. 
And then you have <laughs> Masanori Miyamoto and another guy named Koji, who's his like former disciples, and one more disciple is like sticking by him, Akira. It, they're just like, oh shit, he's gonna go fucking nuts on Tony right now. We better do something. We better do something. I'm just like, the fact that there is respect from his disciples. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. no, he's still he's still a working stuntman. Can we, and it it's it's an actual thing where most stunt people like just like we can't work with this guy. We can't work with this guy because he's has this. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's pretty real. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I love about like this opening. And yeah. And can we just talk about See two- Kyle's on the other side. He knows. Yeah. He's been there. <laughs> yeah. and, and I will state, I have never experienced an opening credit scene of this, like, of, just, we haven't seen a good opening credit scene in a while. Dude, and, I was kind of, I was getting 90s action movie vibes. Yeah. Where the guy's like, you know, you just see his arms, you see him and just bit. Yeah, just training and just getting that. And, and, and especially like how, how it's actually this is, okay this is the filmmaking side of me because how it splits because it is a nice like what will happen later but right yeah just how it does that the music too like everything about the opening you just get this exactly like you said 90s vibe of like what you're you don't know what you're getting into when you watch this but you feel like this anticipation of like, what is, is this going to lead to? Yeah. And yeah. that's why, oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I really felt watching this. I was like, oh, this is going to be pretty much something. It better not disappoint me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is take out the music of the opening credits and just put in, I got the power. That's all you got to do. <laughs> that's all you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Just put that in there. <laughs> Probably the worst Bruce Lee impression ever, but I think it's funny. Oh my goodness. Well, anyway, yeah, it was really funny in the beginning. I was already laughing with the yeah. uh, the Rony Kenshin. Now you just watched the first one. I watched all the five, mm-hmm. right? And you're kind of if you don't you're like you don't know if you like this series yet because you it, just watched the first one. I only watched the first one, which again yeah. I was impressed on how like they did the the sword fighting and just the action in general and yeah. not being a fan of and this is again of the anime or even watching it, it's being seen with a fresh set of eyes. So yeah, I definitely want to watch the rest of them and see how it goes. But yeah, it. it it is kind of true, like how talk views action choreography as just dancing, which sadly, well, okay, I shouldn't say sadly again. <laughs> which is kind of funny. Which is kind of funny. He says that mm-hmm. when I first saw his wave style in Reborn, mm-hmm. I thought he was dancing. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I first, well, I was just like, well, this is different. When he was yeah. doing his, when he was doing this, I was like, is this a little mix? Is this a little mix of Tai Chi with some yeah. boxing? Like what? What is this here? But you know, I ended up, you know, it's like it's something different. I ended up liking mm-hmm. it, right? Now I'm expecting him to do that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I literally thought all the time. Even in Bad City, I'm, I'm just like sitting there, yeah. like, oh, it's yeah. talk. Oh shit! And yeah. then I realized, oh he, shit, he did a little movement like that, but not yeah. nothing that much. So no, uh, which which is yeah. was actually kind of again that that was like a different that was Kensei Suke's Sonomura's movie, and I was just like, okay, yeah. He did it in that style. Now this is what he wanted to do, and I was like, okay, let's see how this goes this time. Right, right. And yeah, but yeah, you'll, you'll. Um, I mean, Roni Kenshin's literally just Daredevil. He could kill everyone, but he doesn't. Chooses so he not. has that struggle, right? Mm-hmm. Like he could kill, but he refuses to. Kind of like Batman, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what that's what he is basically. Uh, you don't have to worry about seeing the anime. There's a lot. Okay. There's like hundreds of episodes, bro. We ain't got that time. You know what I'm saying? No way. Ain't, ain't no way. Got but, time for that? <laughs> yeah, but uh, you will. Every sequel uh, you was like better than the first, mm-hmm. the one before it. So the sword fights get better, and but dude, the surprising thing is uh, the fifth one was really surprising because the fifth one's a prequel, mm-hmm. and it shows him fucking killing motherfuckers damn because this is prequel this is before the no kill clause yes so it's bloody as fuck <laughs> so yeah do you know just binge watch it they're all on netflix yeah anyway 
I still thought it was funny that he was poking fun at the, you know doing bootleg stuff. Mm-hmm. But I, this the disinterest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, there there's nothing wrong with with questioning what's popular or uh like is this all we have? Is this it? Mm-hmm. Like can we do something different? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, yep. even and Kyle knows I love John Wick 4. He knows that. You know, but we're still friends. I haven't yep. been banished or banned. But I mean, it's fine. I'm, it's I'm fine. just gonna go to the bathroom now <laughs> <laughs> as I leave. <laughs> he but no. knows, but Kyle yeah. knows my reasons why, though. Mm-hmm. He knows my reasons why. Uh, but it's fine. We can we could agree to disagree and still be buds. But here we go. It continues here, <laughs> and I like I like the the question brought up here. Mm-hmm. Movies are not supposed to be realistic. People are here to escape realism. Mm-hmm. People want fantasy. They want to escape their, you know, their their humdrum, boredom life, boring lives, or horrible lives. They want to get away from it, realism, and they want to go to some place with fantasy and escape. And 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 it's I that's something I've said like many times way in the past, right? So these yeah. are interesting. You can see both sides. Yes. You can see talk side of tired of the same old, same old type of fight choreography that we see all the time, not uh, pushing the envelope or trying something different mm-hmm. and looking for more and more of a realistic thing, you know. Like, wh- here, here's, here's a good example. What's my time in China? One and two. Yes. Jet Li classics, iconic, playing Wong Fei Hong. So good. Choi Hark. Everybody was at their, you know, at the top of their game during that time, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I love both of those movies. Yes. But there's a lot of people out there that hate both of those films. I know I've said that. There's people out there that, that exist that hate <laughs> Once Upon a Time in China 1 and 2 because of the wire work, right? Now, I could, now and that's their, that's their prerogative, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, their, that's their deal, right? I'm not yes. going to shit all over them. That's just they don't like it, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, I love I love those movies because those movies have great balance. It, yes, it has the woo's ya type of wire work where they have the superhero type moves and stuff like that. But there is grounded fight choreography mixed throughout. Yes, right. Both of those films, those have great balance. Yuen Wu Ping was great at having those you know type of great balance with his movies. And me and Kyle just reviewed Master Z. Legend, uh, Yip Man Legacy. Make sure you guys check that out as well. And we talk about that, but everyone's different, right? Yes. So again, both sides, I I agree with both sides were very interesting, you know. But uh, let's get to this. But it's just, so, I mean, look at his face. He's just like yeah. dead. He's just like dead inside. <laughs> He's just like God. And it, like, wasn't there one part of the of the of the of that scene where? He's just like he just stops fighting. Yeah, <laughs> he, he just stands like, there. He just gets a stun, stun actor, and he's just like, hmm. and then they're like, <laughs> I was like, oh man, that the director's is like, done. the director's like, hey, that's not how we rehearsed it. Let's do yeah. it again. And the the producer next to him's like, just take a break, you know. And then yeah. that's when he walks up and, and talks to him. He's like, come on, man, you're like one of the best. I love the movie Birth. Yeah, I love Birth. Yeah, it was great. It was ahead of its time. It was ahead of its time. Um, you know, it's were you the one that told me? It might have been Matt Merritt from Keep Forward Productions who said, or you, somebody told me that uh, Reborn and One Percent Warrior are a perfect double double feature. It were might you, have been m- Matt. Maybe it was Matt, yeah. So shout out yeah. to Matt. Matt uh, hit me up. He also really loved this movie, dude. Mm-hmm. He really loved the film. But he says, watch Reborn first. And then literally right after it, go straight into One Percent Warrior. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. So yeah, there you go, guys. If you guys need a little double feature recommendation there, but yeah, he's like checked out. He's done. And I think at this point, uh, he's he 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 has that legendary status. But at the same time, it kind of seemed like it was kind of hard for him even to get this gig. Yeah, I mean, uh, his fellow stuntmen kind of brought it up. I think we're like, mm-hmm. dude. I mean, I mean. You haven't worked for years yeah. after birth. Like you haven't worked for years, and like, come on, it took, I had to really pull some strings just to get you this gig. So stop fucking it up. I think it was him. I think this, yeah. this character said that. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. 
Yeah. So. And that's that's a real kind of statement. Again, that's a right. real statement. Yeah. Which yeah. is harsh to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we have our Akira here, his protege. Um, now, we'll get to the scene with him and the girl later. Uh, talking about uh, him, he mentioned something about him being, he was bullied when he was young, and now he yeah. wants to be like his martial arts heroes, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was kind of cracking me up. He was like super green. Of course, we'll get, to yeah. the, we'll get to the big reveal later. But at this point in the film, you know, he's really green, and uh, you know, they're trying to practice the wave style, and uh, he kind of, that was a hilarious transition yeah. where you know, Tox dodging all of the, all the, the pellets yeah. and grabs the gun and he's like, all right, your turn. Yeah. And then they, he like, he tries to pump himself up Akira. And he's medium like, blade, ah. medium blade. And then hard yeah. cut to just him with fucking bandages. bandages all over his face. He just fails. And then Tox's face looking like this, like, oh God, <laughs> that was kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, he's just so done uh, with, with this type of fire choreography and filmmaking and stuff like that. Uh, but he's he's desperate at this point, so he yeah. uh, he goes to uh, the producer here. Excuse me, and he's like, "Look, man, I, I love how when he showed him the script, it was like five seconds. The producer got up and walked out. <laughs> he just got up. He's like, all 'All right, yeah. I'm out of here.' <laughs> he's like, "You want to do what? Uh, he's like, "I'm a big fan of Birth.' Opens it up. All right, I'm out. Peace. Yeah. And they're like literally begging him, like, please, you know, every other studios turned us down. You know, everyone's turned us down. Please, we really want to make this movie. Now, talk about before we get to the actual movie set and the and the movie uh, being filmed. Mm -hmm. um, talk about Tox style, the wave style, and his the purpose so of his character. What is his character's purpose? <laughs> So basically, the fact that he wanted to make realistic action, and the fact when did he like learn this? Because from what I was re reading and hearing, that he um, he met this other guy. Where is it? Uh, met Yoshi Yoshi Tiga Inagawa, who developed the tactical style of zero range combat, which is what you see in the beginning of the film, which is actually Yoshitaka Inagawa literally talking about, yeah, he just came in, did learn the whole art in one year, and then developed his wave style, which right. is just basically in a way of another version of Jeet Kune Do, which we'll talk about later, too. Even almost like the one-inch punch, yeah. except his version was it falls through the body, yeah. and then you do it. Yeah. Uh, but then you had all those montages, like you're bringing up right now, like mm -hmm. uh, the MMA guys. They're all yes. being interviewed. You know, they're like, "Dude, he came in here and like, yeah, whooped ass." Like because that yeah. that was what he was known for for real was the fact that he was an underground fighter back then. And then <laughs> Ru Ru director Ruhe Kitamura just said, "Hey, you want to do, do this movie I have versus?" And then basically took off from there. Right. And the fact that he has trained apparently in Bajichuan, Kempo, boxing and kickboxing, and now has zero range combat and just amalgamating it into yeah. his his own style, which is this, which most martial artists usually do is just they just make their martial arts their own. And right. that's yeah, that's what is that? Yeah. That is Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do. And right? And here in the film, instead of You're calling finding it, your own way, yeah. finding your own style. Here's the yeah. blueprint. Read it, study it, but make it your own and make exactly. it, you know, make your own, make your own way, your own style. That's and, the martial arts journey in any way. And the fact that we in this film that he actually talks about like well, he doesn't even say it. He's just like he's trying to find something that makes him complete right. makes sense. And that's right. what he's he says is like one percent of martial artists fully masters their martial art. Right. I am trying to do that with this film yeah. that I'm trying to make. That's what he's trying to do. And the fact that he is, it, it sucks that he has to beg for a producer, like, can you give me something so I can make this film? I need to, like, show what I can do. 
so that people could understand what I'm trying to do. And that right. is literally like any filmmaker, any stuntman. Yeah. That's literally the full struggle. And that's everyone could sympathize with that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And... I had, um, no, well said. I had uh, Nathan Gehring, shout out to him, a uh, stuntman and martial artist. And uh, I had him on the podcast, the movie Dojo podcast. And he is, he has fell in love with fire. He's a fire breather and he uses fire in a lot of his movement when, when he's doing dance, because he also is a professional dancer and stuff like that with his performances on the street and stuff like that. And now with flaming assassin, which is his short, he just made, which is a really entertaining short film. He, he plays an assassin that uses fire mm -hmm. to basically attack his opponents. Again, nobody else is really doing that. Yeah. The way he's doing it, he even put through, even throws in a little drunken style while he's, blowing the fire and using it he has a fl he has a, fl a flaming sword and everything uh and so it's like again he's expressing himself yes right and who who talked about expressing themselves pre preach it bruce there lee. you go bruce lee this guy <laughs> <laughs> right so uh but yeah we'll get back to this a little bit here but yeah they, they had the whole montage thing like I, I love how the mma guy said yeah he just came up in here and he could hold his own and he was kicking some of our asses and he goes he goes yeah you know if we fought within the rules i have more experience with that most likely i would win but i really wouldn't want to fight him in the streets yeah there are no rules i thought that was interesting and that's um, a real thing too <laughs> that's yeah. actually a real thing too yeah so yeah so now he agrees he's like all right go to this island you guys can film your little movie there so him and Akira go there, and when they arrive, <laughs> oh my god, we got the douchebag the director on the right yeah. here. Oh my god, dude! I wonder, I wonder who this guy was representing. Yeah, I was trying to figure that out, but when he was like, "Make it more like a dance, Nutcracker," I was just like, "Holy oh, shit!" That is actually he said Nutcracker. Yeah. Like, 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 they're all doing it like Nutcracker. I'm just like. <laughs> you are all gods. You are all demigods. You must move like gods. Nutcracker, more nutcracker. And then they start like really going like yeah. yeah. Just... <laughs> I was just dying. I was uh, like, this cut, cut oh. back to Tuck's face. <laughs> like watching yep. all of this. Hey, he's just like, really what the stuff? Wasn't the stunt man? Didn't they look embarrassed a little bit too? Yeah. When they stopped and took their headpieces yeah. off, they were kind of like, like hey. yeah. Both Masanori and Koji are just like, oh, senpai. <laughs> just like yeah, shit, shit, <laughs> shit. They were embarrassed. Oh, it's hilarious. But yeah, uh, this guy is such a such a dick. Yeah. And uh, he's like, no, man, we're we're I'm fil we're filming storyboard here. Like, you know, he's like, you're not supposed to be here. We're supposed to be here. We're filming our stuff. Yeah. You're just gonna have to wait or leave. And uh, I love how um, <laughs> the shot, like right here, I think this was the shot where you hear the first gunfire. Yeah, yeah. And, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> the directors just got shot in the head and falls <laughs> backwards. <laughs> And a really, really, really well done drone shots. Oh, yeah. the movie. Like, really good, smooth. Yeah. Frank yeah. Jang should, should take should take a look at this movie then. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Frank Jang. He loves him some drone shots. That's it. 10 out of 10 stars for the drone shots. You know, Rick Myers is going to talk about this movie mm -hmm. next week. I think it's next week, Action Film Autopsy. So, uh, yeah. I mean, Rick's going to hate it. <laughs> He's gonna hate it because of the drone shots. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, I love the, the I love how they were already talking shit on what do you, what are you gonna? He's like, what movie are you filming? He's like, oh, you're, God, he's like, yeah, like here, here we go, here we go. He goes, he goes, what are you gonna? Then whatever movie that you're trying to film, let me guess, it's going straight to streaming, right? Yeah, yeah that then, hurt. Yeah, and Indeed. then he goes, and he goes even worse. You know, a little elbow to the director. You know, yeah. even worse, it's probably an indie film. <laughs> it was so like harsh. I was just like, "Damn, that I hurts." Like, I was like, oh. "You, dude." I was like, "Fuck this guy in the back, dude." Like seriously, man, yeah. seriously. But he gets shot in the head and he's dead. That's it. Drop dead, Fred. 
And uh, now they're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. We got random gunfire. Uh, going, like, what the hell's going on? He's like, what are you doing? Call in. There's no reception. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and uh, at this point, Talk's character has a, a action boner. <laughs> I guess he's like, what's going on here? And so we have uh, these Yakuza's, Yakuza clan rivalry going on. They're trying to uh, this uh, the uh, the daughter her father's dead, so now uh, yeah. second in command's like, all right, we need to get this cocaine. You know where the cocaine is? Mm-hmm. The cocaine is here on this island. You need to tell us, or we're gonna. It's not gonna be good for you. And uh, again, talk shows up. I love his rea- this guy's reaction. He's like, who the fuck? Who the fuck is this guy? And, yeah. in. <laughs> and uh, talk uh, uh, beats the shit out of these dudes. Has some fun with it uh, there. Uh, the stuntman did a great job, great fight choreography, a lot of fun. But then now we have this a whole bunch of new characters showing yeah. up. Now, then we have uh, this girl, the rival clan. Ami, her, yeah. her name is Ami, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and her father, Shin, Shin, Shin Soto. Sure, yeah, <laughs> I don't have the thing pulled up here. Oh, good. Uh, but yeah, uh, as soon as this character showed up and she started being all eval and talking shit, I was like, well, I hope you die. You know, I was like, but you know, the good villains make you want to make you react that way. I was like, oh, I hope you get it right. So they're now they're on the hunt and what they're finding their, you know, they, they found these guys all tied up. Yeah. And they're like, what the hell happened? They're all saying the same shit. Some one, just one guy just yeah, kicked one. all our asses. And then they... They, they didn't they don't know who's doing it so they ended up calling him Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. <laughs> For the rest of the movie they're calling Tox character Jackie Chan which was funny. Uh but now they're on the hunt. They're on the hunt for this dude. Uh there's her there's her dad right there. Mm-hmm. They are on the hunt. And I love the back and forth. Uh you know we all, almost had it was a little die hard uh, moment. Yeah. Here, they're talking back and forth here. And they're like, who are you? What do you want? And he's just like, he's like confusing him with his answers. He's like, I have to live up to my fans' expectations. That's my job. He's like, what the hell? Are you- fans? What the hell are you talking about? Dude? We need to kill this guy. Where is this guy? Uh, but, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, let's get back to, let's get to the action here. Let's get some great beat down stuff. Yeah. And I love, again, it's, it's, Taking risks mm-hmm. uh, to try something different, everyone will have a different reaction to it, right? You're going to have guys like us that appreciate, oh, okay, he's trying to do this. Let's, all right, that was it. That was kind of cool. That was interesting. Yeah. Or that was badass, right? And then some other people will be like, well, that's that's different. Or as Finkster said, silly. <laughs> anyway, but I appreciate the effort of trying to be different, right? Mm-hmm. So, and, yo, the wrench battle, son. Oh, yeah. Let's go because, with the wrench battle. Because I was watching the making of on this, and Tuck is Tuck actually is active on YouTube, and he actually shows off what his style is. Yeah. And one of it was with a freaking wrench, and I was just like, holy crap. And he said, yep, you can actually use a wrench to deflect and grab a knife from someone like this. Hit him like this way. Also, you could fuck up their collarbone like this. I just, I was like, that was great. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. yeah. But he doesn't just fuck up one collarbone. He fuck up. He fucks up both the guy's collarbones and then his Achilles tendon. I'm like, dude, that is, (laughs) dude. I don't know how many bones got broken uh, in this movie. So you know, uh, five. You know, five stars for bone breaking out of five. In the making of, too, he states like, yeah, my character. It's not looking to kill mm-hmm. because he actually states in it at the start, like I'm not looking to kill. I'm an like, I'm an action actor guy. Yeah. That's it. I'm and, not. And on top of that, yeah. but, and I'll, I'll make them suffer. But I'm just like that's worse. To have. You're in pain <laughs> and you're you're suffering. Holy shit! Yeah, that's I, I, worse. I love how he's fighting with he's fighting with the tool, and then when he come when he starts, you know, he sees the guy strap and stuff. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay. And then he starts tweaking it. <laughs> he yeah. starts tweaking the tool. He's like, let me open it up just a little bit more. And then boom, crush, bone crusher. Uh, but yeah, it's all it's all good. It's all good fun, man. But I like how there was an excuse for why they, you know, some of them decided later, 
At first they were trying to shoot them, but then later they stopped. They put their guns down because the whole area is flammable. Yeah. That's why they put their guns down. So thank, you know, thank God the movie. Cause, cause even us as we're the biggest talk fans ever, but even we would have been like, why did you shoot this dude? Yeah. Like, and then it was like flammable, flammable sink. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Good. <laughs> There's logic. There's logic. Good. <laughs> Good. You guys had logic. Yeah, good. good. Battle logic. Good. 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 Doesn't matter if it's bad or good. What's up, Larry? How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Uh, but yeah, uh, a lot of bone breaking, a lot of bone crushing. It's all welcome. Uh, there's all kinds of interesting set pieces, mm-hmm. and uh, the flashlight scene, bro, bro. Mm-hmm. This is legit. Like you know, it's legit, someone... dude. Because yeah. because uh, there's a lot of people that I've met in security. And a lot of tactical people that I met and spoken to, they use their flashlights. <laughs> and it's they to not 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 just hey, what are you doing over there? Or not just put the gun on this side to go yeah. around the corners to look cool. No, they will use it as a weapon to blind the guy. All it takes is a couple seconds. All it takes yep. is like a two, one or two seconds. Blind the guy, take down. Blind a guy, take down. Blind a guy, strike to the throat, whatever they need. And especially so, with yeah. how heavy it is, too. Those heavy-duty yeah. ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, especially with the battery at the very yeah. bottom. You just flip it around and use it as you got a blunt object there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of legit. Yeah. Whether the fight choreography worked for you or not, is up. that's up to you. That's up to you. You could say it was silly. But... Uh, it's one of my favorite fight scenes in the film. <laughs> the only, my only, my only, especially when he just went straight Wing Chun on, dude, yeah. what was that, a 30 hit combo? Yeah. From the last guy? Yeah. This is supposed like, to be the last fuck you, guy, fuck dude. You, fuck 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 Dude, I was dying. I was like, holy shit, that, that sucks to be the last guy. He should have just been the first dude. But yeah, knee, kneecaps getting taken out. I loved how he would use his legs to break bones. Yeah. While standing. Yeah. Was interesting. And it's not not like I'm not he did do the kick to the, the kneecap and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But he would do stuff like wrap around his leg around another leg and twist yeah. and break a leg, uh break a, a limb or yeah. bone, excuse me, a limb. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was really interesting. But yeah, the last guy, man, that sucked. Yeah, I love how he shoved it into one guy's mouth and it just took him down yeah. <laughs> at the very end. That was great. My only, my only nitpick is where were their flashlights? I know. Literally, <laughs> That's my like, only nitpick. All the glow sticks, and then they're just knife, knife. Like, okay, yeah. we got knives. Yeah, they should have their like if they whipped out their flashlights, that would have been interesting to see what talk does with that, right? But uh, I was like, dude, you guys, none of you guys have flashlights. Uh, but you know what? Here's the thing. I don't think this this group, when they showed up, they had absolutely no idea no. Um, what they were walking into. They were not expecting anyone else to be there. I think even uh, his daughter uh, brings it up. Yeah. He was like, I thought you said there was no no one was supposed to be on this island. You know, yeah. somebody brings it up. So they they didn't really know. Uh, but uh, still, fun fight again. Talk's trying to do something different, it's, and not just talk. You know, the legend himself, Kenneth, yeah. uh, Kenneth K. Sonomura. I mean, yes. he's direct. You know, he did the fight choreography, not directed, but uh, you know, we're trying to do something different. Mm-hmm. That's all welcome. Uh, before we get to the main event, um, were there any other any other action set pieces we missed? talking about before we get to the one-on-one finale here that's going down uh, is one of my well, best one one best one-on-one fight scenes of the year it's going down well uh the small setup of ishitogo when um yeah uh, so we have tony and masanori Mas- and koji were ready to leave after they their encounter with uh ami and her and her gang yeah and killed the other two stunt guys and the thing was, like, Masanori and Koji are, are, like, literally close to the end of leaving. But then they're like, okay, we're going to go back. We're going to go back. And Tony's like, what the fuck? Well, they, they were like, we can't escape. Yeah. And we're going to die anyway. Fuck it. We might as well yeah. go out swinging, basically. Yeah. And then they go and try and save Maria, the one, the rival daughter that knows right. the location. 
and they they end up getting uh, ambushed by Ishitogo and Ami. And this is where we get a sense of who I- Ishitogo is as a character. Yeah. Before you talk about him, mm-hmm. uh, this scene here, I wanted to talk about. Oh it. yes, there we so go. So they end up pairing off while you know talks like, "Look, I can't protect you guys and kill. Do what I need to do and beat mm-hmm. beat up these dudes." So you're going to have to stay together. But they have this moment where they're sitting down talking with each other. And <clears throat> he t- talk about what Akira says in that like, scene. Akira definitely talks about the fact that he wanted to join film because he always got bullied. And it literally looking up to heroes as well. So he just took it up that way. And, yeah. and it was interesting how that conversation happened, which we'll get into very shortly because yeah. he, but he, he also had... mentions though that he real he wanted to be strong like his martial arts hero yes but then he realized being strong he says something later like being yeah. he realized being strong wasn't enough or something yeah. like that yeah which was uh, interesting uh but now yeah some some great fun fights here and there uh now we get to the finale but, but before we get to the finale, actually, uh, talk about Togo here. Yeah. So, and this is his debut. I, this is the first time yeah. I've uh, I've never heard same, of this guy. Same. And from what the making of uh, sh- has showed, like, uh, talk, uh, talk Sakaguchi actually um, came from uh, what's it called? Uh, had needed a a rival, so right. he, he had a. F- his friend Ishi Togo, who is a Jeet Kune Do master, yeah, which and he, which he we, said he teaches Jeet Kune Do in Japan. In in Japan, and yeah. how cool is that, that? And the fact that it's kind of interesting to use Jeet Kune Do, which is Bruce Lee style, and then you have Tox style, which <clears throat> his wave style, which yeah. bo- both styles of their own like perspective to have someone, um, it have someone like is that is a master in Bruce Lee style and then a master of his own style to go against each other. And that's, that's what was the interesting thing that to see this and to where this fight was going to take it. I did not know where this fight was going to take it at all. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because it's not like, Hey, this guy's going to, I'm glad he didn't let Togo fight like Bruce Lee. Yes. Like, I take Jeet Kune Do, so I'm gonna fight like Bruce. I'm no, gonna go, which, and I'm gonna do all no, that stuff. Like, I'm glad that they actually like <laughs> yeah. let him be his own like character right. and yeah. not emulate yeah. Bruce Lee or anything else. They just like, nope, this is the type of character you are. Yeah, and everything else, like, right. And yeah. here's the the gentleman here, the one that did the action choreography. The legend. Yeah, yeah. On uh, another brother from. Uh, Another mother, Eric Jacobus, I uh, had a blast sharing a Comic-Con panel with him. And uh, yeah, so on his podcast, make sure you guys subscribe to his channel. He's got a great channel, great podcast. But uh, you, I did not get a chance to see this episode yet. Did you see this episode? Yes, I did. And this is where, like, again, this is where where kind of talks about how Ken Seisuke Sanamura and Kenji Tanagaki, they, they've discussed both different japan stunt schools which is the japan action club which was established by sony shiba right and then they discussed the school that they attended which was karada club which is you say you say karada's style that learned from hong kong while he was in hong kong and that's what they learned and now look at kenji tanagaki making the rurone kenshin films look at kensei suke sonomura Literally making these films, including this one, and definitely doing something different every time. Yeah, and yeah. it is it is an interesting watch. I would say off of Eric Jacobus's, uh channel. I gotta watch it. I gotta check it, it out for sure. Because they definitely discuss everything of how Hydra was filmed, how they filmed Baby Assassins, the action style, and Bad City. Like nice. And, so I am cool. definitely happy that. Yeah, he yeah. shared his expertise and wisdom, and especially mm-hmm. like what we're gonna see here finally with this f- final fight. Yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, you bring it up, 
uh, the two different schools in Japan. You know, just, I believe Chiba was first. Japan actually yes. was first. Yes. And thank God. I mean, you guys know I'm a huge Sony Chiba fan, and I'm a huge Kurata fan as well. Uh, but again, two di- totally different styles, but they both were needed. And I always found it fascinating that, uh, I mean, Henry Sonata came from Japan Action Club, so there you go. But I always thought it was fascinating that uh, Kurata loved the Hong Kong style mm-hmm. of filmmaking and fight choreography and the energy. It's a totally different vibe. I, I, I came across one of his interviews and he said it was just a, just, just a to- he's got nothing against, mm-hmm. you know, the motherland that he comes from, but you know, nothing against Chiba, but he, he the, the, just that Hong Kong style, that rough, a lot of the energetic style that they have. He just preferred that way, way more over the Japanese uh, style of, of uh, and I uh, thought that was, and he stay. How many Hong? He's made. He's mostly known as you know Hong Kong martial arts. Yeah, uh, and know, what what's actually guitar. interesting too, yeah. if we go back about it, is. Uh, I think Way of the Dragon, Bruce Lee's Way of the Dragon, and when um, sadly the unfinished Game of Death, right? He enlisted a Japanese cinematographer to film his films because he wanted the whole the wide movements and everything else. So there's a lot of back and forth influence from Japan yeah. to, to Hong Kong, and then Hong Kong to Japan. So it yeah. really this there's this nice cohesion and melding yeah. that really makes it all flow together Mm -hmm. and bruce lee was a big uh he loved the zatoichi movies Mm -hmm. you know and i believe some of the the, some of the actors that were in zatoichi movies played uh some of the the japanese guys in fist of fury i believe yeah Uh, i think the one guy who did this and he ran at bruce and bruce like leaned down and hit him in the nuts (laughs) (laughs) that actor looked really familiar like i've seen him in a lot of zatoichi movies uh but yeah i mean that's what it's all about man that's what it's all about being inspired you know it doesn't matter what country it is what language being inspired by other filmmakers and making your own you know expressing your own voice your own style right for better or for worse <laughs> it's yours <laughs> that's yeah. all that matters right uh but yeah back to uh togo here now t- let's talk about some toge like now, where did he come from because this like i said this, this is his first movie Top, like, first, we already mentioned earlier, like Top the, wanted a rival. Yeah, and all I can say is there's barely anything on him that I could find except there will like, be more now. Yeah. Because of this movie. <laughs> because he, he will be in demand now. Yeah. But yeah, going back a little bit further before we get to the finale, uh mm-hmm. him having the confrontation and taking out the stunt dudes who came back and he like fucked them all up and he was gonna kill them all but the the girl but like look i know where the cocaine is don't kill them yeah. how nice of her i'm surprised she's mm-hmm. she's cool like that she could she she didn't really have to save them but um but i, I loved how before Togue stepped in uh the guy who had the what was it tony stunt shirt yeah, he was. I think he was Tony, right? The guy who played yeah, Tony. Yeah, the, right? the guy that played you Tony. Noticed, yeah. You notice he ran in and did his flying jump kick, but what did yeah. he do? He went, "Wow!" Yeah, he, <laughs> right? literally, he literally sounded out before doing his attack, which <laughs> you do that in stunts, but in real fighting. <laughs> what and what did Togo's character say? He was After like, he took him out. It's like this ain't a movie. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> said. He says. He says never yell before an attack. Exactly. Never <laughs> yell before an attack. It's like. It's like he's not wrong. He's not he's like, wrong. Oh, shit. Whatsoever. Don't don't fuck with this dude. Yeah. And what about the scene earlier where, uh, uh, hold on, the daughter of the other the the evil daughter. Oh yeah, Ami. She just threw. She once she realized the place uh, used to be functional a few years ago. She throws. Yeah. She has the guy throw the lighter down, which yeah. sets it ablaze below, almost killing her dad. And like yeah. there were like twenty other dudes down there. They all yeah. end up dying. Now, what was the purpose of that? Either she was trying to do something like I'm helping out, and then <laughs> oops. <laughs> Especially when she mentions when her dad comes in, like there's nothing here. What happened to your face? Did he get you? Yeah, it's it like, sounds like. I thought she was just like tired of her dad's bullshit taking forever. That's to what kill. I thought too. Talk. So she's like, look, I'm just gonna do it myself. Yeah. I kill all of you, hope hope hoping talks down there. 
And but, it, it, but, it was, but yeah, when she saw her dad again, she was like, oh, what happened to your face? Yeah, because <laughs> it because it was an interesting kind of what's it called? I don't want to think it was going in that route. Just the fact that Ami wanted Maria as a friend because they had like y- the Yakuza like background. It's like I just wanted a friend to understand me, and she's like Maria's like, no, you're just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you're just crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I kept wondering why she wants Maria to not be harmed. I don't want to scratch yeah. on her head. Uh, like, and then, I, oh, I just, she just need a friend. friend. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, I was kind of hoping we'd find out what happened to her leg and why she all kind of fucked up. I guess she was just born that way. From what Good. I remember, it, it, they, they said was like she had, uh, her mom got in a car crash and then Something probably like that. that's. Yeah. yeah. Right. And probably that's why. I think that's what happened. Yeah, right. and she was mad at her dad. She loved her dad, but she was mad that, you know, she was, she life. was born, and kind of thing, you know. And he kept her. He, he chose the thug life. The th- <laughs> thug is ruggish. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's get to uh, my favorite fight in the film: the one-on-one throwdown. Yeah. I loved how as soon as uh, Tox shows up, him and Togo have three seconds, three seconds of a back and forth. Yes. It was really fast. Talk shows up, Togo turns around, and they're literally like, boom, 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 boom. And then they step away. Yeah. And he's just right like, after that. Yeah, right after that, Talk's like, <laughs> what the <Okay>. hell? <laughs> yeah. He's like, what the fuck was that? He's like, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I got an opponent. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Because he's, he's pretty much been in God mode. Yeah. I think the whole movie. And now he's like, huh, pain. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's almost like kind of like you hinted earlier. Similar styles, very different, yes. but similar. Similar and just how they approach each other, how they approach the fight itself. It's yeah, it's really interesting. Like and it it there was a little bit of me that thought like this is like headshot where fucking what happens is Sunny Pang ha- has equal waste and just choking on it. He's just doing this. And I was just like, and then I looked back at, at like, okay, sometimes Salat does this. But then I looked at uh, Tox videos and I was like, yeah, this is how he fights. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna no. talk, talk anymore about this because this, this is how each of them are gonna try and fight each other. And yeah, it is, it's so quick, but well done of how everything is framed like it it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter in terms of who wins or loses in this fight you just see these two matching each other and even like you said talk feeling like pain the fact that he like tries to catch a kick from togo and then loses the shoe and then fucking gets hit right at in his yeah. chest and bleeding. I'm like, oh damn. And then right. finally getting a hit, which is that scratch. And he's just like, I got you now. I fucking got yeah. you now. Well, first he like, first he scratched him here when he yeah. when he tried to get his eyes. Yeah. He talks about dodges like, but he still kind of gets them. Yeah. He talks like, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah. I'm bleeding. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, and, but yeah, it was interesting because the ball of your foot when you take martial arts. I'm by no, I'm by no means a martial arts expert. That's why I have Kyle here. I did take some martial arts, but I'm not I'm not an expert. Okay, but when uh, in karate class, the ball of your foot. Every time we came in, we were always stepping like pouncing like this. Yes, to kind of harden harden this mm-hmm. part of your foot, mm-hmm. and we did that a lot. If yes. I do that now, my leg would give out and fall off, and I would collapse into a million pieces. <laughs> it just be like, I just shatter. <laughs> if I tried that now, but you know, every day in class, we always warm up, and we always would mm-hmm. do that with our feet. They kind of hard get used to harding this part mm-hmm. of your foot. This guy, it was doing the toes. Yeah, he wasn't doing the ball of the foot. No, he was doing the toes like that. I was like, yeah. what? And then he was, you know, doing the little uh, ankle swivel. But he was doing yeah. that, like harding, the, like getting ready. Yeah, I was like, he what was the hell? literally he, ready for a fight. Yeah. So when his toes kicked, talk, it was like, oh, that's why that shit hurt. Yeah. 
Because it was it, like his he it's fucking hard, man. Like Jesus. Yeah. And the fact that it it's those little moments in the cinematography too that captures like these little bits of like this little detail of like, oh, this is gonna hurt. That's why this is leading to this and that. Yeah. And and yeah, like even we get a small drone shot in this fight scene itself, yeah. too. I'm just like, oh crap, we're, we're going to see the scope of this, and all the way to the point that both of them do their perspective one inch punch. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's just a s- stalemate between mm-hmm. the two of them. Yeah, I love when they first start fighting. Mm-hmm. There's no music. Mm-hmm. I love that. No yeah, music. Cause it's getting it's getting real now. We're getting serious now. Yeah. And then when they start finally harming each other and getting injured, you know, injuries start happening. Then music comes in. Yeah. Like, all right, we're in another level, we're another level now. And <laughs> now the music pops in. But a great back and forth. But because everyone's different, everyone likes different types of fight choreography. Everyone like likes different type of styles. I can see some people watching this fight and going, they're just slapping each other. It's just slaps. I could see some people be like, they're just slapping. This is the is he, is he a slap fighter? Are these slap fighters? What's going on? Like I could see you know, everyone's different. Mm-hmm. I could see people yeah. bitching and complaining and you know, oh, this looks soft. They're wrong, but I can <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying I could see people doing that, right? Yeah. Especially when they're not used to what's up, multi gun multi gun man. How you doing? Uh I could see people uh that are not used to talk style mm-hmm. of punching and fight choreography and moving. They could I could see people complaining. Like every, look, people could bitch and complain about everything. Mm-hmm. And they do. Yep. <laughs> yep. But, when you're a fan of these kind of movies, and it, unlike this movie did what Reborn did not do, mm-hmm. this movie gave us a great finale one-on-one fight. Yes. Uh, as much as I enjoyed Reborn, that was Reborn's big negative for me, was they kept building up his rival. Mm-hmm. And then when you get to the end fight, it's literally like... <laughs> it's not. It was so unsatisfying. <laughs> it was like such a letdown uh, as much as we like reborn but again that's a nitpick but this movie oh you get you get a fight what a great fight mm-hmm. filmed perfectly edited perfectly both performers doing a great job and, and uh, i'm so, again i'm so happy that togo's G, his version of Jeet Kune Do wasn't i'm just gonna do an bruce lee and i'm gonna fight and act like bruce mm-hmm. i'm glad he didn't do that because that would do that would have been so cheesy bro yeah that would have been really bad agreed and the fact fact that to this fight alone you you feel as an audience member like i don't know who's gonna win yeah i was yeah none yeah like because it was it you're so invested into it and you're just like i don't know who's gonna win i i i they're really good at doing this and they have mutual respect for each other, which leads to the end of the fight where after they're one inch punch to each other, that the father gets back up and sh- about to shoot back. And- I wanted to see who was going to win. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking Togo just sacrifices himself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what like, does the father say? He's like, Bef- the way you guys hang it off. I yeah. Like, he's like, what 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 the like, hell's going on? And that's where it brought me back. I'm like, right, this is a movie. And he's right. That's like, kind, of, kind of true. Like, every movie would have that bullshit. But and he's like... Tra- they're trying to kill each other, but then there's yeah. that mutual respect towards Yeah. Because uh, it was kind of a stalemate, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, let's get to the big reveal. Mm-hmm. And I could see a lot of people being disappointed with this. Uh, to me, it, I kind of put it, it could put a smile on my face because I had an idea, I had an inkling it was going that way anyway. Yeah, but um, I could see some people again that probably didn't like this kind of stuff. But we'll get yeah. to it. So Akira shows up and basically is like, "Look, talk, look. You you, you keep talking about you want to be the the one percent that you want to be the master of your craft, but you have to change yourself. You have to yes. you have to make the decision to kill. 
Yeah. Like, are you really gonna job to this 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 chick? Yeah. Like this this young girl. You're really gonna just let her kill you, and that's it. Like, you need to you need to do something. So I will be the catalyst to get you into gear. Mm-hmm. So he kind of sacrifices himself. He gets shot in the head by the girl, and then talk. Uh, you know, like the Flash shows up and he starts choking her out. I love how uh, she was talking all that shit the whole movie and had yeah. no issue killing anyone. But finally, she's getting attacked and she's like, "You're gonna hit a girl." <laughs> and she's like, "How could you? How could you hit a girl?" Yeah. All I'm gonna say is Bill Burr joke. <laughs> That's it. Look up the Bill Burr Bill Burr joke. <laughs> Just you know what joke I'm talking about. Yeah. Like billboard, billboard joke. But what did yeah. you say? I'm not saying it's right. I'm not, I'm not saying you should do it, but <laughs> no reason. <laughs> the, the arrogance. Uh, I can think of plenty of reasons. <laughs> because all I remember yeah. was watching for the reason. first time. He, he yeah. has a reason to take her out. He has all the reason yeah. in the world to take her out. Yeah. And, and what it led to after this, when it that part where it's like you hear cut i'm like no okay i was like i'm not mad i'm not mad i'm not no, mad no, i'm not mad no. was, and, and then there's the cameras just going and that one the other producer just comes up to him and says yeah like i it was great now we get to do this and this and and talk is yeah. like but what about akira i i should do this for because of akira's death. and the and the producer's like what the fuck are you talking about yeah there's no akira and then it just has that hard like close up on talk space like what and then it comes back i was like did it just upgrade me <laughs> does this movie really upgrade me what is it doing an upgrade ending and it was literally like him just holding on to ami's throat and maria just pleading with him like don't do it you're, yeah. you're, you're you're better than them and then he lets go and he's just looking for a cure and i was like what the fuck just happened yeah. And then you have Tony, Masanori, and Koji come in and like, see what I tell you. He, he actually thinks there's a third disciple. And I was like, Whoa. Dun, dun, dun. the yeah. fact that he made up Akira. To keep so, him sane, basically. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is pretty fucked. But I was like, it's, it got what? dumb really quick. It got yeah. dark real quick at the end. Uh, yeah, to kind of help keep him keep his sanity. Yeah, to keep him sane and functional around others, he kind of created Akira in his head, and there was there was no Akira. Yeah, <laughs> I Which... wonder if I wonder if Akira was him when he was young. Mm-hmm. Right, because you go back to that conversation the conversation with... he had with the girl, because they flat they they show uh, earlier scenes with the uh, him with her. Mm-hmm. Akira wasn't sitting down talking to her. Talk no. was. Yes. So I kind of wonder if this was talk when he was young. Yeah. And and getting that's... bullied and wanting to prove himself and be like his martial arts heroes. Yes. But it wasn't enough. Like what did he say? It wasn't yeah. enough to be strong. Strong. And right? and that leads to the final ending where er- everyone's getting interviewed. Like, did you notice anything about him? And everyone's like saying, No, it, he just helped me. And then Tony and Masanori and Koji was like, we we respected him, yeah. but yeah, we just don't know what to do. And then finally, the interviewer is just like, "Do you think you're strong? You you know, like heroes don't last." And the f- final saying that he says is like, "Film act- action actors are strong." And it's a hard cut. I'm just like, "Yeah, yeah." I'm like, "That, that was yeah. good." For a but, second, though, for a second there, when they were interviewing everyone else. I was like, did Talk actually kill somebody? <laughs> I was like, yeah, because <laughs> it felt like they were being interviewed by the cops or something. Yeah, I was like, did Talk actually kill someone later? And now this is like turned into a horror movie now. Yeah, they're like interviewing uh, everybody else. And like we, we thought he was a great guy, but uh, but no, they're just <laughs> just interviewing them because just... it's kind of going back to the beginning too when they were getting mm-hmm. interviewed earlier. Yes. You know, the MMA guy was getting interviewed and the tactical guy was getting interviewed. Now we're back to that. And uh and yeah, he goes, you know, hey man, you know, there's there's the guy was interviewing talk at the very last shot. He's like, you know, there there's a huge difference between reality then and really? movies. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? You know? And uh, you know, he talks like 
no nah, man being an action actor you're, they're they're strong they're strong yeah. yeah that was that was very interesting very very poetic statement mm -hmm. you know i did not know this i think you told me this which blew me away that after reborn talk wanted to retire yeah apparently he was i don't know if you guys watching knew that which i was like what yeah that how 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 much of a shame that would have been if he just retired after reborn you know? yeah but you never know now he got a chance to do his style and show everyone that his style mm -hmm. maybe at that time he felt like nah, this is my final statement i made enough movies i've been doing this for fucking years you know i think versus was what year 2000 i yeah. know it was early uh, definitely 2000 making, yeah he's been making movies for years so it's mm -hmm. like I'm kind of glad he didn't because we got so much really great movies and appearances from him after uh, Reborn. And now, now if he wants to retire, he could. I think yes. Todd could retire after this movie. Yeah, because he is he has a, a, from a personal level from you know, Tak Sakaguchi's you know personal martial arts action actor filmmaking journey. I think he could retire. Of course, we don't want him to retire. We want him to make movies till he's 80 years old. Yeah. We want him to be like Shoji Karata, you know, just still kicking ass and taking names. Yeah. You know, as old as Karata is, I mean, he's still just as fast, which is yeah. scary. That's kind of scary. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, man, uh, this was a, a this movie was a it felt original, it felt unique. Mm -hmm. Um it was a pleasant surprise. Uh, definitely one of my favorite movies of the year. Yes. I don't want to say it's my favorite yet because we got a lot of movies this year. Uh, but I know it's your favorite as of yeah, right now. Yeah, it is uh, definitely because I did not. Because you come that from yet. this world. So it's even yeah. more. If, if it affects me because I appreciate the, this world and the behind the scenes of it, you being there, yeah. I can I can see it, it, it affecting you even more. So Yeah, because... Yeah. Again, I did not expect the opening to be that real. And then after the full film and just like, oh, yeah. And it's exactly <laughs> what, what we talked about. Like, there's yeah. no right or wrong in this. There's no finger pointing. No. It's just like, it's, it's it's exactly like a martial artist. Just accept that some people have certain ways and then just yeah. continue doing what you do and just learn from it or yeah. whatever. But, you know, and not, excuse me, <clears throat> and not, <clears throat> I could do this. Not a lot of people in this industry have the opportunity or the chance to express themselves the way they want. You exactly. Know, it's difficult, you know. Uh, so at least Tuck got his final say, even yes. though it got dark at the end. Yeah. Can you imagine if he killed the girl and then the lights turned on? Yeah. And then the camera pulled back and then people ran into That would have been a dark what I can't do. ending. That would have been a much darker ending, which I would be like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, what? Then it really would have been an upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. You're having that dark ending. You know? Yeah. Like, like super dark, right? Yeah. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> Just like, and, and, it, and they would imagine? not, like, and they would have not actually like had the interviews anymore. It's just they would just like have like so much, so yeah. much just saying, "Yep, he's going away now." Yeah. All right. Oop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, we got to wrap it up here. Yep. No uh, we got to rate this some bitch. Uh, all, all right, movie dojo. I'm gonna add something new today. Starting today, I'm gonna add just for fun. That's what this channel is all about. It's supposed to be having some fun here. Um. I make you laugh, hopefully, hopefully. And you guys are always making me laugh at the comments. But I'm going to add something new. Entertainment. So we're going to have a rating for the action, because we do that on the movie dojo, and the movie itself, and entertainment. Because I'll tell you one thing. That I've, I've come across recently some ridiculously entertaining, extremely low budget indie films. <laughs> and the entertainment is high. So fuck it. Let's 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 start that today for the channel. Let's do it today. Yeah. So Kyle, action move and don't forget C is average here on the channel. C is average. Kyle, a action. What do you give action? Me? I give it a 
Fuck it, I'm giving it an A because it's Kensuke Sonomura. Yeah. It's that that is a bias, but it is a bias that I could get behind because like he's working with Talk and they're working together to make something different that we haven't seen. So yeah. I'm giving that an A. Okay. And movie. Now the movie, movie itself. The movie itself a friggin' A because it is too fucking real of like everything in general of like all like again, I didn't see the upgrade ending happening. Right. Me neither. I, I did not. Me neither, yeah. Yeah. And, a lot and, of people don't didn't like the upgrade ending. Uh I thought it was I loved it because we don't really get stuff like that a lot. No. <laughs> Sorry, no. spoilers. But uh and, yeah. Entertainment. Entertainment. Aside from like yes, yeah, some cheekiness and everything else, but yeah, sad jokes, but it's still ah A minus. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. A minus. I'll just the give it an A. Same across the board for Samurai Guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A A and A minus. <laughs> A. Yeah. A. 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 A A triple A <laughs> rating there. Uh yeah, really enjoyed it, man. Really enjoyed it. Um again, we want to see more filmmakers uh you know directors stunt men martial artists action actors take risks and uh let their voice be heard you know that's what it's all about you know for yep. better for worse yeah Zack snyder's voice is being heard you know he he's having his freedom to do his rebel moon stuff and people hate it mm-hmm. we'll we'll see if rebel moon part two uh will be better and a, a better effort and uh, be a better finale to his rebel moon series <laughs> but hey he's got the freedom he's voicing his, yeah it's his voice this is voice, right? Right. Uh, yep. But uh, I have, I still haven't seen the first Rebel Moon yet. I'm not, bo- I'm not even going to bother watching the Rebel Moon movies until the R-rated versions come out. What's the point yeah. of watching them? Right. Yeah. But when I the, heard there's an R-rated version, what's what? the point? Yeah, it's like an extended R-rated version. You might as well just wait for that. But yeah, I can't wait to hear what. Uh, excuse me. I'm looking forward to hearing what Rick has to say uh, on the next AFA. Yeah, well, well, at least when Rebel Moon Part 2 comes out. All right, that's it. Love you guys. Thanks again. Let us know in the comments below uh, what you guys thought of the one percenta. Uh, uh, Tak Sakaguchi loves the smell of his own farts. (laughs) Was this too artsy fartsy? Uh, But was it artsy fartsy enough where the farts don't stink and it's still good? Let us know. (laughs) You love the fighting. (laughs) <laughs> see see if, if if during the fight with togo if he would have just pulled this out <laughs> he would have won the fight he would have beat him uh let us know thumbs up half thumbs down for one percent warrior all vo- let your voice be heard yes uh let us know uh, in the comments i will read that and uh we'll see you guys on the next one i uh, hope you guys enjoyed yeah. yourself hanging out uh don't forget to like share and subscribe all that good stuff follow kyle on his filmmaking journey some big things are coming up. We can't talk about it yet. Uh, we'll talk about it in the future with Kyle. Uh, but yeah, don't forget, the Kung Fu Genius episode is fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. We talk about fucking all the, Chun, Yip, guys. the Yip Man sequels. <laughs> fucking Wing Chun, guys. Uh, but let's talk about Samuel Hong, all that good stuff. Uh, keep kicking, right? Keep waving. <laughs> this this was interesting. Yeah, like just keeping his fist right in front of him. Yeah, I was just like... doing that. That was interesting. Uh, it's all it's all good. It's all good. All right, guys. Hope you had a good time. See you on the next one. Take care. Peace out, bitches. <laughs> 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 <laughs>